Hi, I'm Purple Streak, and welcome to another episode of I Wanted a Game for Free, so got a review copy of it, but now I have to make a review for it. A series where I get games for free, then attempt to cobble together a review for it. The first episode of which being my Attack on Titan 2 Final Battle review. I can't say no to free games that I want, so here we are. The Outer Worlds review. This channel is a train wreck, I'm sorry. So there's not much new I can bring to the table for an Outer Worlds review, except maybe being pretty new to the genre. I've always been more of a 3D platformer, Nintendo, horror gamer, so never really got into many action RPGs. Coming from Obsidian Entertainment, the guys that brought you Fallout New Vegas, this game plays very similar to other action RPGs, but as I'm very unfamiliar with them, I'll mostly be reviewing this game to see if this is good for newcomers. So the game gets you up to speed right away, which I like. First you're in a colony ship, and have been for like 70 years. Next you're on a capitalist paradise. Everyone's talking to you like an infomercial and you're shooting people on sight. It's great. Of course, this heat sure makes a zero-g brew extra refreshing. They've also got a decent character creator, which is always appreciated. You like jazz? The basic plot of the game revolves around the player being cryogenically frozen, Futurama style, on a colony ship. And due to complications, you're not thawed out until 70 years later. The universe has been colonised and workhouses are back and better than ever, with you initially being introduced to a town with a cannery selling soul tuna, and everyone's lives essentially revolve around this one factory. You travel between towns and planets on a ship called the Unreliable that you commandeer off a dead guy, and kill off the hostile alien wildlife from marauders that wander around with nothing better to do than pace till you show up, I guess. It sure is boring around. There's a main quest to follow and a host of different and interesting side quests, each with a variety of ways to go about completing said task. It's fun as you often get to make decisions like, do I help this person and see what further information I can acquire from them, maybe leading to some new loot, XP or further missions, or do I just shoot them and move on to the next quest? Even the main quest is forever branching, as one of the first big decisions you have to make is whether you divert power away from the town's cannery, meaning an entire town will shut down and people will be forced to move, or divert power from a refugee camp with a botanical lab living outside of control of the town. You can also manually save and load, so you can see the ramifications of murdering an entire town, then change your mind and load a previous save if the blood on your hands keeps you up at night. I learned the hard way that choosing the attack option and killing someone important in town will quite understandably turn the entire town against you. Also, once while skipping through dialogue, I ended up selling a person I was trying to save into slavery. Uh, an easy mistake I'm sure we've all made, so I thought I'd go back and change that. Having this option is definitely handy, but I will say it did ruin my immersion a bit as knowing I was a quick save away from any real repercussions left a lot of the experiences rather hollow. Thankfully, as I'm not overly invested in the story, I just found this overall helpful and a welcome addition. You've got a great variety of weapons, from futuristic weapons like plasma launchers and these cool flamethrowers, to some good old fashioned bludgeoning tools if you're like me and can't aim to save your life. I eventually found out you can mod these weapons and repair them too, but often I found myself finding new and better weapons long before I needed to either repair or mod them so this feature would probably only benefit you more in the late game. You've also got a max pain bar to slow down time and give stats on the enemy which is cool, but not overly exciting. I think ever since slow motion lethal slide tackles became a thing in Fear 3, nothing's ever lived up to it. The enemies you encounter are pretty interesting, especially the alien creature designs. I love the Manta Queen. I'm surprised how effective enlarging a bug and making it alien-like is. And when you first encounter them, you're not strong enough to face them, so you have to sneak past them, making them something to fear, and they're still quite daunting even when you can manage them. These digging apes are cool too, attacking briefly then disappearing underground for a surprise attack, giving you a quick second to vape some health back or reload. The Marauders are varied too in the usual first person shooter way, with snipers, melee attackers and so on, with the occasional mech suit or android thing with a tank of health. The AI is mostly alright too, minus the typical running out into the open to get a less advantageous cover point that seems to be a mainstay of games now. The same can be said for the companions you recruit along the way, although a lot of the time it felt like I was giving them up as a blood offering, as they'd often die mere moments into a fight, although they certainly helped distract enemies as I went up to bludgeon them. Speaking of companions, they're a good addition to the game, offering small perks like a weight carrying bonus or additional side quests to venture on. They also have multiple things to say if I ever felt so inclined as to actually listen to them. I will say, being new to this genre of game, it does a good job of explaining things without being too annoying. Small tutorial boxes pop up to explain different abilities as you need them, and the overall menu isn't too complicated which I like. It's not like Xenoblade where there's just too much info rammed down your throat at once, and if you don't use an item like say your perks or armour because you didn't realise it was an option, 
the game isn't going to be made unplayably difficult. That being said, there were definitely options in there I'd missed for a good few hours, like companion perks and consumables. There's also an option to view your standings in various factions, but this never seemed necessary to actually view. Like any video on my channel, <laughs> hey, zing! I also learnt to rapid fire the E button to pick up everything, as there's a lot of loot to find in every locker and bin on this planet. Oh, thank god this alien creature had a necklace on him. I needed a present for the wife. The gameplay itself, the running, gunning and world traversing was very fun and enjoyable. All the weapons I tried have a real weight to them, and I found myself rushing into any combat I could find, as it was incredibly satisfying. Unfortunately for me though, I'm not one for games with a lot of dialogue, and there's a lot in this. It was fun at the beginning, as I tried to get invested in this game's world, but near the end of my stay in these outer worlds, I was speedrunning the speech options to skip to the next mission. I'd much rather be slaying a Mantis Queen than hearing about how it walking out to buy cigarettes and never returning affects someone's backstory. But if you're more into world building, this game is for you, as there's a lot of dialogue and info to be picked up as you go. The locations are interesting, abandoned buildings covered with monsters, beautiful caves, some great scenic views, this game definitely has a nice look to it. There were plenty of times I found myself just looking at the world whilst traversing, taking in the scenery before caving in someone's head. Oh no. The cities are all varied in look as well, making each one stand out, and all have interesting side stories to help flesh out the city and lead to more exploration. One such example was recovering a slightly dodgy character's drugs from some alien creatures, and in accepting the quest, you get a key to an otherwise unaccessible area filled with the things. That being said, some of the locations are a bit samey when travelling between areas, but there's usually some landmarks and events along the way to keep things fresh. This game has also been optimised very well. I currently use a 3 year old MSI laptop that struggles with modern games on high settings, but it played this game no problem at decent settings. The odd frames stutter here and there, but otherwise it's played very well, it would play with no issues on a normal, averagely powered computer. You'll also be doing yourself a favour if you can play this game on ultra settings, as the game honestly looks incredible with the shading and effects at max. This game is currently on Steam for £49.99, however the initial special offer launch price was £24.99, so I assume this will be the next sale price come the next Gabe Newell wallet rape sale. The game also has a DLC expansion, Peril on Gorgon, and a second on the way in 2021, the expansion pass including both being priced at £19.99. So if you end up enjoying the game, it's good to know there's more content in the future. So, why did I even want to play this game? Well, it's a bit cringe. Well, a lot cringe. But the biggest reason I wanted to play this game is because of how much I love the Outer World song by Stupendium. It's an absolute bop with a brilliant well-produced music video to go along with it, and I've genuinely had it on my Spotify playlist for a while now. Its description of working to pay off a debt in a colonised universe to a sick beat is just great. If you haven't seen it, you should definitely check it out. And because of this song, I was interested in learning more about the game. Who doesn't want to work till you die to pay off debt? It's like real life, but in space. I also found this song through a TikTok trend, so I'm really doubling down on the cringe today. Read the colony policy that defines you as company property. I was originally going to go on this tangent at the beginning of this review, but realised if my annoying accent and senseless rambling didn't make you turn off the video, me talking about TikTok and YouTube songs would. So here it is at the end where it's too late to turn back. If you're new to games like this, then I'd definitely consider checking this one out. And I assume if you're a Fallout fan, then this space outing will satisfy your need for a new Fallout game too. Thanks for watching! I've got a new fan game video coming out next, so look out for that. If you like what you see, consider liking, commenting and subscribing. If you hated what you see, then consider disliking, leaving some hate and reporting. Screw it, why not? Special thanks to my patrons and channel members. Sanch said, Zill, Double Tails, Joseph the Electrician, Gold Tiger 2000, and Tomas Gaboon. See ya!